Here is my H-Bridge motor control circuit again. That's the power output from this switching power supply, different project. Here we're going to be looking at how, what, optocouplers, which in this case are used to isolate the twi help isolate the higher voltages beyond 15 volts if you're using CMOS from uh, using a higher voltage motor instead of this 12 volt motor you can use 24, 36 or even 48. Here's one circuit that we will be, this it's not the uh, center of this discussion. In this case, I've used a couple of optocouplers to isolate two NPN bipolar transistors. And depending on the voltage rating of the optocouplers and the transistors, I could run this thing up to 48 volts if I want to. It'll certainly handle 12 or 24, which has been my goal. And it isolates me from the 5 volt digital logic. Nonetheless, to use that, oh, one more thing. We can also use optocouplers on the TRIS inputs to completely isolate all the motor voltages, including power supplies, away from my microcontroller. So what I'm going to do here is not so much go into these circuits, but explain how these optocouplers work to use them in this manner. All right, let's look at a spec sheet on an optocoupler so that we can understand what we need to do and to get the right optocoupler for the application we desire. An optocoupler, most of them are six pin device that you see here. Here's the schematic. It consists of a infrared light emitting diode and it has an associated phototransistor. When the LED is turned on, the transistor is switched on, and you can go from there. The next item we need to consider is the output transistor, particularly the collector emitter voltage. That is the voltage between pin 4 and 5 on the collector. It's rated to a maximum of 30 volts. If you exceed 30 volts, you'll probably blow the transistor. So the 4N25 and its related devices uh, would be uh, work just as well for a 24 volt H-bridge motor control. The other thing you have to be aware of is collector current. That's the collector emitter current. It's a maximum of 150 milliamps. For the most part, you should not be having to put any more in on these particular designs than, say, 30 milliamps. So this is well within the range. Optocouplers are interesting devices. All right, now let's look at how optocouplers are connected. Optocouplers provide two advantages. They isolate the input voltages from the output voltages. So these work really well for um, logic level shifting. You have to get a few concepts in your head as we walk through this on how these are configured before you use them. Let's look up here. I have a TTL gate. TTL is like an Arduino or whatever. They put out 5 volts. In this configuration, this is called sourcing the current because the current moves from the gate or whatever you're driving it with through the resistor, through the LED to ground. It sources the current. When the LED is turned on, it will turn on the phototransistor. You notice that in the circuit here, here's the voltage here, here's the load, and this switches the ground. The output is what we call sinking the current, because when the switch is turned on, it provides a path to ground. What this does is this. If I have a high on the input when it's configured like this, 
there will be a low on the output. So this basically inverts my logic level and it also changes my voltage level. So this could be a 3 to 15 volt CMOS circuit being driven by a 5 volt TTL circuit. And thus it inverts a high in, low out. Let's drop below. You could really sort of use the same circuit again. This might be CMOS. This might be a CMOS circuit on the input. And again, it's still sourcing the current. It provides the current for the LED, this time through a 470 ohm resistor. You're going to have to increase the resistor probably if you're running the CMOS at 15 volts. So a high end turns on the LED, turns on the output transistor, and the output, because it's connected in the ground side of the load, goes low. So logic level again is being inverted but i'm going from say 15 volt cmos logic to an output that's 5 volt ttl to say an arduino or pickaxe or whatever you're using so this is in this case it is a uh, source in sync out inverting all right let's look at concept number two Look how this is connected. This time, the anode side of the LED is connected through a 220 ohm resistor to 5 volts. And instead of, and we're using whatever gate you're using, is going to switch to ground. We call this, again, the input is syncing the current because it provides a current path to ground for the 5 volt supply current. When this goes low, the LED will turn on in this configuration. And when this transistor switches on, it will switch the 3 to 15 volts to the top of this resistor and it's high. So this, how, this is how one way that I can go this is just another way to go have a low in and a high out. So this is again inverting, but it's a different way of doing it. It does the same thing as before. You can go down here and do the same thing with a CMOS gate like a 4011. You're again going to sync the current on the input, but you're going to source the current once again on the output, and it's going to be inverting from low to high low to high or high to low high to low now we're going to look at a configuration that is non-inverting like the previous slide we're going to uh, be sinking the current because we're going to use the gate at the bottom of the optocoupler LED to switch to ground and so it's going to go low it's going to switch on the transistor but this time the transistor will sync the current to ground. It will connect ground and go low. So I've managed to go from TTL to CMOS voltage level, but I did not invert. A low out of this gate will produce a low out over here to the CMOS circuit. Down here, same deal. I can have a CMOS input, a low, I can have a TTL output on the other side. The transistor switches on. It goes low when the input on the in, when the input goes low, the output goes low. So once again is non-inverting. It's sync in, sync out. It sinks the current going in. When the transistor switches on, it sinks the current going out. All right, here is our fourth configuration. This time this is also a non-inverting. If you look at this, the input is connected in the source configuration. When the um, pin here goes high, it provides current for the LED. LED turns on. It switches the transistor on, which switches the collector voltage to the emitter and goes high. So it's a high in TTL level 5 volts over here. And an output will also go high at a 3 to 15 volt CMOS level. 
you can reverse the uh, you can reverse it again with CMOS going in note your resistor values based on your voltages going in a high out of the gate will source the LED current turn on the tran photo transistor which will switch on the voltage and it will source the current moving through the 4.7k and it will connect on out to a TTL circuit or Arduino or whatever. Let's return to a circuit that you saw earlier. This, this is a uh, non-inverting tri-state switch and I use two optocouplers and two NPN output transistors. I will discuss this circuit in detail in another video on this particular circuit. But what are my advantages here? My digital circuits over here can be all 5 volts. And you notice that I'm using the connections on these gates in a sync configuration. So if either of these go low, for example, if this goes low, or that goes low, the associated optocoupler, and you don't want them both going low at the same time. Uh, 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 uh. Nope, you don't want to do that. But if this, for instance, goes low, this transistor will turn on. It creates a current path from collector emitter through the 1000 ohm current limiting resistor and will switch on Q2. I didn't label it. It's Q2 will be switched on and you will be switched to ground through the lower transistor. Same thing over here. If this NAND gate goes low, this will switch on and provide current for what was normally Q1. Turn that transistor on and it will go high. What have I got here? 5 volt digital input, high voltage transistor output, if you're going to use something like the 4N25, VCC is limited to 30 volts. Those are some example circuits and what to consider when you are using optocouplers. And of course, as you see here, you might have saw this earlier in the video, I'm using this for input isolation. So how is this connected? The inputs are being sourced from the 5 volt digital circuits. High in, high in will switch on the associated transistor. It'll be a high out, high out. There's those resistors to ground. And then you can, there is your D uh, data in and enable, and you can switch on your motor and so forth. So that ends this brief review of how to use optocouplers. Uh, please click the like button if you would and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.